So in this video, um, specifically for those that are brand new to TorchMateCAD, I'm going to design two parts that, um, maybe even three that I started out with that I wanted to complete from my table. So when I received my CNC machine, the very first thing I wanted to do was complete the water table, and, and one of the very first things that I needed was a gusset. So the very first thing I want to do is go ahead and create a gusset. Now this is probably not the way I designed it when I first started, but this is the way I would design it now. Um, Think one thing to keep in mind is when you go and design these things, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and my way is not necessarily right or the easiest. It just is what works for me. So the very first thing I want to do when I'm creating a gusset is create a square. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this one 5x5. Five five. Uh, not 5x55, five 5x5. Five, five five. And F7 and F6 are zoom tools. F7, full screen. F6 will back it out every time you press it. I like doing that just because it centers it on my screen. Um, the, the very first thing I'm going to do in my gusset is I'm going to uh, maybe get rid of, well let's do this, get rid of this corner. I want to make it kind of triangular in shape. Um, and, and I'm not going to like this gusset the way I'm about to do it, but I'm just trying to show you different options. So if I double click on this and I do not see any nodes to edit, I have to break it apart. So arrange break path. So it's still one object. When I highlight it, you look at this polygon, it still says it's one object. But if I double click on it now, you can see, oh yes, I've, I've broken it apart and I can actually go and do node editing. So now I've got a triangle. That's the very first step that I did. Now, um, I'm going to put some curves into this and by default, the, the uh, squares are going to be polygons. So we're going to go arrange uh, convert to poly arc. And what this does is it changes those little plus signs on the nodes to these round little circles which allows you to grab lines and curve them. Um, and this is why I said I wouldn't like this ob this object is when I curve this um, I've got this sharp little point here which may be something that you want but typically I'm welding on these gussets so I'm going to go ahead and create this a slight different way but I did want to show you that. So what I'm going to do is create uh, let's say it's going to be 5 inches wide by maybe, well, I kind of like that 0 0.6. That's 0 0.6, just a little over half an inch. And I'm going to duplicate this. So Control D for duplicate, and I honestly can't tell you where that command is. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So with this object highlighted, come up to this box, rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to align these objects in this manner. So I'm going to highlight both objects. And I'm going to go to a range, sorry, layout, arrange and distribute alignment, which I always get to with Alt K. I have aligned last object selected. I'm going to line these up on the top and left hand corners. And that basically line these up. Now what I'm going to do is weld these together, basic weld, and now they are one piece. And the reason why I did this is because I didn't want those sharp little points when I curved this line. So I'm going to double click on this. Um, this point is left over from the weld. I don't need it. You don't have to worry about getting rid of it, but I'm just getting rid of it. Um, so it doesn't drive me nuts, I guess. Um, so now I've got, now that I've done that, I kind of have a better design for a gusset. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to want to curve this inside line. Now, when you are go trying to curve this line, if I grab it up here or I grab it down here, it doesn't matter. It's going to curve it equally between the two points. If I can grab it up here and try to push it, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to find something that looks good to me, like that, and go ahead and apply that. And now that's stuck. Now, there's a couple of things I want to do to this gusset. The first thing is, is uh, when I'm gusseting some of my tables, I have a weld that's going to be um, in this area, and I don't want to have to grind this out so I can fit it up into that weld, or grind the weld so I can fit this up tightly. So I want to clip this corner. There are different ways to do it, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Transform, sorry, i got to find it. Transform round corner, no, sorry, fillet round corner. Round corner is going to do all corners. We're going to do fillet round corner. Fillet round corner also has a miter option. So let's just say I want a 0.25 miter. Then you can come down here, click on the corner you want. Click. On, I hit apply there first and clicked on this corner, and it mitered it by you know, 0.25, which is probably going to be sufficient. If I needed to bump that up, I could bump it up. It'll increment 
uh, probably by 0.2 or something random. Um, so I'm going to say 0.35. I think 0.45 is a little big. And that looks good to me, so I have to hit apply and close. So now I've mitered that corner. And now I'm going to round these corners. I don't, I don't want a sharp edge there that my kids can hit their heads on or something like that. So I'm going to transform. And I'm not going to do round corner because that's all corners. I'm going to do a fillet round corner. And I'm going to take off the miter. And I'm just going to come down here with 0.35 selected. Click on the corner I want to round. Notice it did affect my curve. I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, but I'm going to bump this uh, up. Let's go to 0.5. I like that rounded corner a little better. I'm going to come down here and click on this corner that I want to round. I'm going to say apply, close. Now, there are some buggy little things like that in the software that are going to affect your parts, like curves and things that you may have already done. I, there aren't any ways around them other than them just getting software fixes. So I'm um, just go ahead and recurve this line. And that's a decent looking gusset. Um, you know, if you want to take some of the weight out of it, you can go and come in here and make some circles. And I don't, I'm not really caring what size of circle I've got in there now. Let's just kind of eyeball it. It's a little big. Maybe a little bigger than that. Nah, a little smaller. It, it's just whatever looks good to you. Control D to duplicate. Honestly, I don't know where this command is. I just remember du D, duplicate. So Control D to duplicate. Let's make it a little smaller. Instead of 1.4, let's make it 1. Um, notice that I did not have this lock checked when I did that, the proportional scaling, so it, it only affected one of the axes. So Control Z or Edit, Undo. And I'm going to lock that now. Let's make it 1. So now we have a little one inch circle. Um, it's probably a little too big, 0.75. It's looking a little better. Control D to duplicate that. Um, you can try to line these up the best you can, like saying, oh, I want it to be, you know, measure between this point and this point, and try to uh, center this on that. Um, I'm not going to concentrate on that specifically on this little gusset. I just going to, going to eyeball it. Um, you can move them in here where you want. Then now, what we need to do if you if you show fill view show fill, those have not been cut out of that yet. These are th these are four different objects. If I highlight all of these, you look at the objects. It says four objects. It's because that's what I have. So I'm going to take all of these objects. If you were to take all of these and try to X or weld them from this, it's going to complain because you have multiple objects, you'll get unpredictable results. Most of the time it seems to work okay for me. But um, one of the a better option is to probably take all of these and group them with control G. That's also under layout group right there. Control G. And then go and do this XOR weld it won't complain because as you group them they're considered one object. So that's a very simple gusset. Um, it's not the exact one I designed. I spent more time on it and got a little bit better uh, design than, than what I have here, but I just wanted to show basics. Now the second thing I wanted to create was I wanted to put my table on wheels um, and I wanted these brackets underneath the table to be available to bolt a caster wheel to um, but I, I wanted them to kind of be out of the way. So we'll, I don't remember the size of them, honestly. I, these are things I come up with at the time. But we'll just say it's we have 5x5 five five square. Not 54, 5. Okay. And on the bottom of my table, two corners were square. Um, and let me just draw it. This is from a bird's eye view. If I have a 2x2 two two tubing... Um, the table came down this direction, and I don't have a snap to grid or anything on turned on right now, so it's not going to be exact. Actually, it's turned on the snap to grid. Um, okay, so we'll move this right here, move this right here, and then so from a bird's eye view. Um, I had a piece of tubing coming off of my leg right here and another piece of tubing coming off of this leg. 
And what I wanted to do was come up uh, and weld this bracket underneath the table. And I didn't need this corner. I want to clip this corner. And then I want to I wanted to put in a bolt hole pattern for the caster wheels. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Um, so the very first thing that I want to do, I'm going to turn off this snap to grid. I don't, I don't like using it most of the time. Now if I had a snap to object, that would be cool. But snap to grid, it's kind of annoys me. But um, Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is I want to find out what my bolt hole pattern was. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to make this up. Um, so we're going to say we had quarter inch holes. Um, this is radius. When you do a radius, it's going to be the diameter. Um, so ha radius is half the diameter. So um, you can see I have a 0.25 hole when I specified a 0.125 radius. So now I'm going to duplicate this. Control D. Again, I don't know where that option's at. I'm going to highlight both of these and Control D those again. Now this is my pattern. I, and again, I don't remember how far apart these are supposed to be, but I'm going to make it up as I go along. So. We, what I want to do here is I want to find out where the center of this object is. And I don't need to move it to any specific point on the screen. I just need to know where it's at. And what I want, I want this object to the right to be uh, one and three quarters of it. Now, I bet it's going to be more like one and a half inches, one and a half inches from the center of this one. So center of this one is at this X point. I'm going to copy that. The center of this one, I'm going to do it this same x point plus 1.5. So that is exactly one and a half inches away from that one. They're not aligned um, horizontally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this object. Sorry, highlight this object, and then my last object that I want to align it to. I'm going to hold down my shift key, left click it. I'm going to go. Sorry, move the mouse. Um, I'm going to go to layout. Arrange and distribute alignment, and I'm going to align. I'm going to have this uh, aligned to last object selected, and I'm going to do center uh, horizontally. So that just centered this one on that one, and and they're exactly one and a half inches apart. Now we're going to say that this object on the y-axis, we're going to copy the uh, coordinate. We're going to make this coordinate the same, minus two inches. So now that is my, I always had that really close. Uh, this is minus two inches now, and we need to align it to that one too, vertically. So highlight this, shift, click this one. Alt K is the shortcut for the alignment. I'm going to align them vertically. And notice it didn't move my last, this object, because underneath the alignment tool, I had align to last object. That's the last object you select. So, so now that I've got those aligned, I'm going to align this one to this one. Alt K. Align it by centering it, and then I'm going to do the same thing to this one to align it vertically. So now that is, we'll say that's my bolt hole pattern for my caster wheels. I'm going to group these, layout group or Control G, and I have to make this fit on here now. Now I know because I'm going to be clipping this corner. I want to cut off that corner. You know, try to. The rest of this is all underneath 2x2 two two square tubing. I don't want any sharp corners, so I'm, I know I'm going to be clipping this corner. Um, so I'm going to be cut, moving this to 45 degrees. Now I think a negative 45 is going to put me where I want it to be. Now I don't know exactly where I'm going to be putting it, but we're, we're going to be putting it pretty close. Um, what I'm going to do is shift click this, Alt K or the layout alignment tool, distribution alignment. I'm going to align this to the right top section of this part. Now you notice that it, it these nubs outline the basic object. Um, this nub is not down here between these two objects. It's, it kind of puts a basic square around any object and that's the nub that you're dealing with. And so when I did alignment it aligned this nub right here with this nub on this object. So and what I want to do is the reason why I did that is I think I'm going to bump this down maybe uh, 3 eighths in from the each side. So minus 3 divided by 8 up in my X section. Minus 3 divided by 8. Um, remember multiplication and division operations in math are always done first. So I can do the minus 3 eighths and it'll do the 
division of the 3 eighths first and then subtract that from the, the coordinate. And that puts that in the location that I'm likely going to want it. Um, again, I'm, I'm just basing this off of uh, memory. So I'm going to highlight everything. These center holes are all grouped, so I shouldn't have a problem when I come in and XOR weld these, which basically subtracted those holes from this piece. Now what I need to do is I need to round this corner, but or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Miter. So I'm going to highlight this object. I'm going to come up to Transform, Fillet Round Corner, and the Fillet has a miter option. I'm going to click on this corner, and I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to keep bumping this up until I get something that looks close to what I want. And actually point, let's add, change that 7 to an 8 maybe. Eh, that looks okay. No, I'm going to make it point 0.7. And I'm going to apply and close that. So now I've got this piece the way I want it. I, I don't want the sharp corners again. These are going to be down by the heels. I don't want to be kicking them. Um, these sharp corners will be covered, but the, this section isn't. So transform, fill it round corner. Let's get rid of the miter. Um, let's bump this down to maybe like, I don't know, half inch. Let's go a little bigger than that. It's three quarters of an inch. Click on this corner and that rounded those two sections. Apply, close. Now Alt, I'm doing Alt S for show, fill under the view menu. And this is the bracket that I used to weld to the bottom of my table and bolt on the caster wheels. And I actually had to use some gussets too on this, this part too. Maybe I'll go and get a picture in, you know, of this in my garage, these two parts. Um, anyway, those are the very first things that I needed to design on my table. And um, they were things that I just didn't know how to do. I mean, when you, you can always combine and weld things and um, rip things apart by subtracting them, by using objects. But when it came to rounding corners and things like that, that's one thing I struggled with at the very beginning until uh, Torchmate had actually shown us in a uh, thread somewhere on how to do that. So let's go to Transform. I'm going to show you Round Corner. Now Round Corner is going to do, you can round the outside corners, round inside corners. I never noticed that before. Uh, round outside corners. This is going to affect all corners, so I'm just going to bump this up, and you can see what it does to the object. It's going to do all uh, all corners. And again, the transform fill around corner is going to only do corners that you specify. You can do miter, which you know is going to miter instead of rounding it, and then you can adjust it. You can hit apply to that, click on another corner, and then try to bump that up. Apply to that. I let you know. Miter that, and you can come up with complicated parts uh, quickly. Anyway, um, if there's any specific topics anybody would like me to cover, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I'll just try to come up with them as I see questions arise in the forums and how to do this and that. And again, it's just the way I do things. It's not necessarily the right way or wrong way. It's just the way that I go about doing things. Hope that helps. Thank you.